to Joe. Okay, so it's been a long time coming, and you have been at the Jellies, and you've been supporting Vegas Tech, and it is a pleasure to have you as a sponsor. So tell everybody what's Party Line. It's a mobile app that randomly and anonymously connects users to other users in a one-on-one -on -one voice chat. Okay, so you guys are in beta right now. Yes. This is what I hear. All right. Yes. And the, advantage, and the advantage of this is if you want to do basically like a chat roulette except with normal people where you can set age and gender, where you can like actually meet other entrepreneurs and you can have good conversations, this is sort of the market that you're targeting, right? Correct. Okay, and then what can everybody do to help? Is it live in the App Store? What can we do to it download? Is live. Yes. We'd appreciate some downloads and some reviews. Okay. All right, and if you guys see Joe around, he's always wearing that party line hat, but he's the one that paid for the beer and made this happen tonight. So one last round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely come check it out. So thank you. We have Melissa who's going to talk about what's going on as far as new companies. We have Stacy from Creative or Creative Catalyst Creative. Catalyst. Excuse me. Yeah, I was to going to talk about Catalyst Week and then Nate from Work in Progress. So let's start with you, Melissa. Tell us about uh, all this new stuff that's opening up around yeah, here. Yeah, there's a couple of new restaurants that actually opened up downtown, which we've all been really, really excited for because, you know, there's only so much Thai food that we can have. We love you, but just, <laughs> come on, guys. Um, so actually, Rachel's Kitchen just opened up over by the Ogden on Las Vegas Boulevard. Um, they have someone circled protein lover scramble, but uh, <laughs> um, they have like pastas and salads and juices, so if you need some healthier options. And then RCP opened up, which is Radio City Pizza, right next to Insert Coins. Um, they have pizza, and their bar is actually open until 4 a.m., I think, on weekends, which is awesome. Um, and there's some pretty good reviews about them, too. Um, and then the one that I'm really excited for was Park on Fremont, which is, I think, owned by the same people that own Commonwealth, which I love. So they have awesome cocktails, and they have even things called, like, Philly mac and cheese steak and a fried chicken and waffle sandwich, which I had, which was really, really good. But um, I think there's been some pretty good consensus all around about all the good food. And I heard yeah. Atomic Liquor is opening up soon or has opened, but I haven't been there, so I can neither confirm or deny this. <laughs> yeah. Have you, and have you guys eaten at either of these places, any of them? Yeah, Park. So I was actually just at Park a couple hours ago. And, oh, uh, just a couple hours yeah. ago. Yeah, uh, it's no, fresh. What'd you order? Just for the record, Zach made me take about two, three shots of Fireball before I came up here. <laughs> so I'm a little drunk right now. Perfect. Good. Yeah. Okay, so we have a... Yeah. All right, so we have a... We have a clear winner. Yeah. All right. Okay, Stacey, let's move the conversation over to you. Tell us awesome. what's going on with uh, Catalyst Week and explain it and tell what to yeah. expect. Yeah, so um, Catalyst Week is produced by our company, Catalyst Creative, which is a socially conscious agency or experience agency. Um, we came here to help just curate thought leaders, entrepreneurs, individuals that come to Vegas to mentor and inspire the community that's building here. Um, we call it bonus points if they really fall in love and they decide to move here or get involved in a larger way, but right. that is not the point of Catalyst Week. Um, so we do it the fourth week of every month, So it's uh, and we do speaker series Thursday and Friday night, um, usually five to six speakers each time, and then we also work with all the different individuals to kind of match up, kind of like a match.com, if you will, for like uh, <laughs> mentors. So um, we really think ahead and like try to get the community involved as much as possible. Okay. And do you have an exciting story so far, like some connections you made or some people you brought out or? Yeah. Um, so one of our first attendees from last November, Cameron Sinclair, has been back, I think, three times now. And they're working on a really, nice. I don't know what the project will be, but they're going to do some like really cool beautification. He runs Architect for Humanity. So um, he's going to be building some really interesting things. And um, this, la uh, this last Catalyst Week, we had a few people that have connected with the Life is Beautiful Festival. So a nonprofit is going to set up an entire like African village inside of the Life is Beautiful oh, yeah, Festival, yeah, yeah. which is totally insane and awesome all at the yeah. same time. Um, yeah. So it's been really, really exciting. And then um, next week, we're actually hosting a special Catalyst Week in conjunction with First Friday Festival. And um, Life is Beautiful Festival, all around festival culture and what's kind of the conversation that has not been had yet with what's going on festivals and why hundreds of thousands of people are flocking there each month. Yeah. Okay. And it's not just the, it's not just the last week of the month, but it also sounds like there's a little bit of stuff going on online, right? There's the Catalyst Board. So when you could talk a little bit about that if people can't make it for this week. Absolutely. So we created the Catalyst Board to kind of give a voice to the community here and also to connect our attendees who don't live here necessarily to be able to interact 
with the community so they can post things they want to see, questions that they have, um, speakers they want us to curate. And it's been pretty, we have about 100 members so far, and it's really, it's the conversation's starting. Um, but to get on it, it's just facebook.com backslash groups backslash Catalyst Board. And we're really just open for conversation. We just want everyone to have a voice in what we're doing. Okay. All right. And then what's the next thing somebody could actually attend? Um, next week, um, the 7th, or the 3rd through the 7th, we're doing Festival Generation Week. And that's just like a special one-off Catalyst Week. And then April 24th through 28th, we will have our April Catalyst Week um, in conjunction with Agent of Change. So it'll be around health and wellness. So it has to be a big one. We have about 40 attendees coming. Okay. And if you want to know more, where do I direct them? Um, the CatalystCreative.com. And it's there's no E on the end of creative. Okay. Because we're really creative. Very creative, <laughs> yes. Minimalists, I like no, it. Totally. <laughs> All right, let's switch conversation over to Nate. So tell us about uh, what's going on with Mentor Day at Work in Progress. Yeah, so we uh, recognize there's a lot of talent here in the Valley and just from the guests that are already coming here just to visit and see what's going on here. So um, we're, we're building a platform to be able to let them uh, interact with the startups that are at our space or just really the startups in our community to be able to you know, walk them through certain experiences that maybe our community not, might not be experienced with us at this point. So one of the examples is... Taking uh, shots at the park? Yeah, taking shots yeah. at the park is one of them. <laughs> no, like one of the examples is, you know, there's a lot of folks here that have maybe gotten to the seed stage and haven't uh, experienced, you know, anything beyond that. And they're, they're, they might not understand what's expected from the VCs for a Series A or... Uh, what the due diligence is on their part, or maybe even that they should be, do, be doing due diligence of the VCs that they're going to be partnering with. So um, that kind of experience uh, with all the guests that are coming in, we feel like we can leverage what they, their backgrounds. And we're really building a platform to be able to connect those folks with the folks that are working in our space. Okay, and then how exactly does it work? Like, how, do, how does somebody get connected to somebody else? Yeah, so for example, tomorrow, the uh, first mentor day that we're going to have, um, you can go to our website and, and register for office hours with any of the mentors that are listed for office hours. Okay. And, and this episode doesn't actually come out till Sunday, but is it a okay, monthly so if, thing or a weekly thing? Or Yeah, so we're it, looking to do it monthly, and actually the next one's going to be uh, during uh, uh, Tech Week. With, okay. We're working with uh, Tech Cocktail right. to uh, uh, leverage like, the, the guests that they already have in town and to be able to connect them with um, people within the community. Okay. We should talk. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're, uh, the other side of the table is the girl's side. Don't, don't <laughs> give in. That's how they trick you. <laughs> Anyways, don't all right. Well, I appreciate you guys all coming out to the table. Yeah, and uh, thanks for sharing what's going on in the community. And we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Our guest interview today, we have an attorney that's visiting from Seattle. Yep. His name's David Wickwire, and he has a lot of great information for a lot of the startups out there that watch this show. So I wanted to bring him in, and um, even though you have a lot of information about how to structure startups, how to um, do all that legal stuff, like I wanted to start it with a little bit of personal life. Like, what what is inspiring to you? Yeah. And um, I mean, because lawyers seems like such a boring thing. Yeah. I don't want to say it, but yeah, like they're, you're they're boring people. You got to have something that keeps you getting out of bed, and you seem to have a ton of energy. So where's it yeah. all come from? I got out of law school in 1998, just as the first doc, the dot com boom was occurring, and rode that for a couple of years, and watched a lot of clients raise a bunch of money and go under, kind of in the 2001 to 2002 phase. And the kind of attorney that I am is a corporate attorney. Uh, you know, you can work on venture capital transactions, IPOs, large M and A. And over the course of my career, I've done that work, uh, but I keep coming back to wanting to work with entrepreneurs. And so I pretty much exclusively work with startup companies now. Uh, I don't have any public companies I work for. If any of my clients were to go public, there are people in my firm that do that because it's really hard to disappear on a large transaction like that when I'm working with a lot of startups, answering day-to-day -day questions like that. And maybe just to tell a, a quick story about a startup um, that I'm particularly fond of, uh, a guy that, that, that came out of Microsoft in 2006, and he was a, a, an evangelist for their Windows Mobile group. And this is pre-iPhone. Uh, this is the Symbian <laughs> phones, the feature phones. Right. And he had an idea that you could basically manipulate everything on your phone from a web page. And, and over the next few years, he basically built iCloud for Android 
on a phone and uh, and raise some money and uh, raised money during like the, the the darkest days of 2009. You know, if you look at the the the, the stock market in in spring of 2009, it was the bottom, and he was virtually out of cash. And negotiating with a corporate investor, had three thousand dollars in the bank, and trying to hold on to his company, and um, in in negotiating without kind of any fear because he believed in his product. But it's that that entrepreneur that shows up with a business plan and says, "I want to do this." I get there for that first pitch, and okay. that's what excites me. So, okay, that, I mean, that sounds like an awesome story. I mean, I can see how that would keep someone uh, kind of keep keep them inspired. But um, you know, my goal is sort of like to provide information to the people who watch the podcast that really help uh, them achieve the goals in their life. So, yeah. this story that seems to come up, and I'll keep the names anonymous, but this is not just a one-time thing. Is people that have created startup weekend. Um, ideas and turned them into companies, yeah. and then they tend to struggle with like what ownership and what level of effort, what kind of you know kind of problems come down the road. So I was wondering, like, for people that are doing a startup weekend, like, what are some tips about how they could structure the company and like stay out of this trouble? Yeah. So I have a client that that I have a current client that came out of a startup weekend in Seattle, and fortunately, all the founders of that weekend stayed together, and everything's great. Uh, and they went through a a, tech, a Microsoft TechStars accelerator last year and have raised money and are doing well. I also have a client uh, who went through another accelerator and exiting the accelerator, there were four people and about a month afterwards of working together, they, there was pretty much a divorce and two people wanted to take the business very differently and, and the other two wanted to go in a different direction right. and it was a pretty messy situation of kind of acknowledging the, the contributions of each and what they could do and they spent a lot of time kind of separating um, but the actual weekend itself it's 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 I'm not an IP attorney but it's a gray area because you're there largely for an educational purpose the way that if you've been to a startup weekend you know you pitch your ideas Friday night and the best ideas uh, then get picked and everybody votes with their feet and goes and works on that idea yeah you don't know who they are you're not paying them right and it's, signing some contracts seems like it take away from the whole energy of it but yeah and if you sign a contract they, is it know? even valid because you're not getting consideration I mean you're not getting paid yeah. and <laughs> most people realize don't realize that even if you have a startup and if someone's not an employee, the default rule is that the person who's developing for you owns the, the copyright in what they're developing, the code. Mm. And all you get as, even if you pay for it as a right. license. So even if you were paying people at Startup Weekend, which they don't. So it's, it's, it's a gray area that it's, that it's, I think Startup Weekend's gonna continue and there's gonna be companies that come out of it, but often what happens is the people that, that take the, the idea forward, they'll give a small amount of equity to the other team members just to acknowledge their contribution in exchange for an assignment of the IP so they can kind of later when they come talk to me and I say, well, do you own everything you're supposed to own? And right. the investors who, you know, the VCs who put money in and the choirs that you hopefully will come knocking at some point, they'll do diligence on you to make sure you own everything that you're supposed to own. So it's, uh, it's a problem. I mean, it could be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, during our pre-interview, you talked a lot about, uh, like vesting periods. Like, I mean, is that something that they should be talking about all, all, all at that point or is it? No, I mean, it's it, it, to have vesting periods mean you have, it means you have a corporation already formed and you have mm -hmm. an idea of what the, the equity split is. And if you've just gotten together for Different a startup idea. weekend, right. you're just trying to get a pitch together for Friday night or Sunday night so that you can win startup right, weekend right. just to have the bragging rights of winning. So you're not even thinking about a company. It's on Monday. And I think Startup Weekend is, is good because they're starting to have some programming for the day after um, and, and to try to solve that problem. Uh, but it's, it's a hard problem because you want to ha have people be as creative as possible to come for this educational experience. Right. But at the same time, if real value is created, what do you do with it? Right. When, so if somebody starts a company, like how far down the road do they need to talk to a lawyer? I mean, when, and what are resources they can go to if not? Yeah, it, it's really about the time. If you're in development on your own and you're not really, you, don't, you might even have a simple website up and you're not really interacting that much with the public and you're really in development mode, you could probably... Hang on your own is a, you know, essentially it's your own assets. At the time you either are going to launch in a substantial way or at the time you really need money or you're going to start hiring outside people, it's a little strange to have to hire a development shop to have the IP come to you. I mean, you really want an entity, not only for the entity to own the IP, but you also want limited liability. That's the whole reason mm -hmm. you have an entity is you want... Right. 
you want that entity uh, to be the one in contract with all these uh, d development shops if you're if you're getting help. So gotcha. And you've come down to Vegas a few times just to kind of see the situation and like yeah. what's going on. Like, what is your opinion about uh, how the community is evolving and like where you see it going? I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, it's I don't think there's there's I, I think this is one of the few opportunities in the country where there's you're really trying to do a sim city with a tech community. I mean, it's really they're building it from the ground floor. I mean, there are the new sim city is out by the way, and yeah, I have tried it, to build this yeah. city. But. I mean, there are there are tech companies here, but this is not. It, it, if you thought you know if you asked somebody five years ago, they wouldn't have thought of this as a tech community and. And and they're curating this this wonderful downtown pro, you know the downtown project as far as uh, in a very you know to overused word holistic way you know all the different things that that need to make a, a work life situation here attractive for uh, you know people that have very high human capital you know knowledge workers uh, you know, it's happening and uh, the thing that was very refreshing for me um, when I first visited is just hearing that. The return on the investment is is equal important as the return on community. Yeah, and it's the first time. Yeah, in we, my we, yeah, we actually year threw our ROI out the window and yeah. had to like rewrite ROC, our return on community. It's, it's in my 15 years of, yeah. of practice, I've never heard an investor or a community that that is a a goal of the <laughs> of the investment thesis is you know we want to make a lot of money on the investment, but we also want this startup to contribute to what we're building here. So I think it's I think it's very exciting. All right, and then so last question, I was just. In Seattle last week, like how come you guys have a brewery on every corner? Like, is that beer that popular? Uh, I think it's to match. There's a, even a coffee shop, even on like <laughs> six on every corner. So yeah, I think the beer the beer movement. Um, you know, Seattle's it's crazy. Yeah. Seattle's known for a lot of uh, foodie type things, and the beer movement really started there in the '80s. So Red Hook, which is now national, was a small craft brewery in the mid '80s, and I think they went public in the late '90s, but. Um, everybody, I brewed beer uh, through college and afterwards. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. yeah, you brewed beer. Yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah. See, this is what it's like out there. Yeah, right? everybody, oh, yeah. everybody brews beer up there, and they <laughs> grew, your beer? people oh. grow their own hops. No, we just you make recipes. And, oh, but yeah. I mean, didn't you name it? Like, oh, I didn't, I didn't commercially like, do it. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't commercially do it, but everybody okay. makes beer up there, and it's it's. I think we, I, you figured out that um, we like intense flavors. I was on the East Coast. <laughs> in my early 20s, and this was in the 80s, uh, or late 80s, and uh, and all the beer out there was this bland, and all the coffee was this bland, and coming from Seattle, it's just like, wow, we, right. uh, yeah. There was some lemon, some pepper, whatever, it, yeah, yeah, just exactly. to be different out there, you know, exactly. but yeah, I almost missed my flight because of it, but thank you for coming out. Great, thank you. I really appreciate yeah. you uh, talking to us about this. We appreciate it, so. thank, you. thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's a pleasure. <laughs>
decided about a year ago that he was going to live off of Craigslist for 30 days. So he literally started with nothing um, other than a cell phone and his passport and decided in LA, let's see if he can get all of his housing, food, and basic needs directly from Craigslist. And the entire premise is all about whether or not social media brought us closer together or made us further apart as a society. Wow. All right, so what are the dates? Give everybody the links they can go to, dates to check it out. What Thursday, to April 4th from 5.30 to 7.30, we have Fuku Burger Catering, who doesn't yeah. love Fuku Burger. <laughs> so, of course, it's a free event. You can go to TicketCake.com, get your tickets there. We're selling out at 150 people. It's at the Innovation Center. Great event for all entrepreneurs and anyone who's a huge fan of Craigslist Joe. All right, well, I'll be there. So thanks for coming out to the episode, everybody, and thank you for coming to talk about Craigslist Joe event. And that's it. We're done with episode 16. Thank you guys for coming out. Beat, bump, bump. Downtown,